video, we're going to get kind of more into the nuts and bolts of, okay, you have a website you'd like to add some images to. What is my prepping process to prepare for this? So in a previous video on my channel, I talked a little bit about that, you know, it's easier to take away pixels than it is to actually add them and make the image larger. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to just go to Pixabay and we're going to pick out a couple of images here. So I'm going to go under photos. And so I decide maybe I'm doing, since I'm doing actually a website on cats, we'll go ahead and go with cats. Now I'm going to go under the downloads here and I'm going to choose 1920 by 1280. Okay. So I went ahead and downloaded that. And I'm actually also though, I want to find one more graphic so I can do a comparison for everybody so you can see what I mean as far as not having enough pixels. However, I want a graphic that's really going to make that kind of stand out here. Actually, you know what? I can just reuse. Actually, you know what? This hummingbird actually will work out really, really well. Now for the hummingbird image, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do 640 by 438. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead, because we've been focusing so much on Dreamweaver, I'm going to make the assumption that you are paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud. So we're just going to focus on Photoshop for these demos. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and tell it to open and I'm going to open both of my graphics here. Okay, fantastic. So they're set side by side as far as design and layout goes. I would actually like to kind of have them free floating here. Okay. The reason I wanted these to kind of be free floating versus the standard uh, tabbed process that we're used to seeing here is just so out of the gate, you can see the difference here down at the bottom uh, where notice 640 by 438 at 72 PPI. So 72 pixels per inch versus a 1920 by 1280 pixel measurement at 72 PPI. So you can already kind of see the difference in size between the two images. Again, this comes down to whether or not what you are going to need in your graphics and your images. Now, you have several tools inside of Photoshop that you can use to tweak your images. Again, this isn't all about teaching you how to use Photoshop, but it is something that, um, let me actually hide this bar. Um, this is something that you can do some quick and easy edits without having to get too in depth into Photoshop. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually just show you resizing the overall image. We're not gonna do any cropping or designing to it, just you wanna resize it. So for instance here, like the cat picture, 1920 by 1280, that is a pretty huge graphic. So I'm going to go ahead and activate and make sure I'm working in the cat picture. And under image, there's an option called image size, and this gives you a lot of control over your graphic. So I'm going to choose image size. And what you can see here, and I'll actually magnify again so that you can get a better view here of the window. So a couple of things to pay attention to whenever you're looking at the resolution here, as far as your image size is concerned. By default, Photoshop assumes that you are working in inches. You're probably gonna want to, especially with the web, you're gonna wanna click on this drop down and switch over to pixels. That way you have that dimension matchup here as far as the layout goes. Now you can get a little bit fancy and you can change the width or the height as you see fit. I'll show you that in a second. For those that are new to web design, one thing Photoshop does for you is you do have the option up at the top here as far as clicking on dimensions to make sure you're under pixels. But then notice here too, you have a bunch of presets. Some of the things to point, at, point out though in the presets here is like 1024 by 768, you really want to make sure you're working with that 72 PPI or like the 1366 by 768. But now let's say that maybe those don't work for me. I actually want something a little bit different. 
I can come in and change the width and the height where I can say maybe I want this to be 800. Now when I type that, notice what happened. You see how the height automatically changed there. That's because of this little chain link. It is going to constrain as far as the graphic is concerned. So if you turn this off, it will no longer constrain the aspect ratio, which honestly is pretty bad web design because what happens then is you kind of get that squished or smushed look depending on what you're working with. So to be honest, I would not turn this off. I might actually take this down a little further. Let's take this to like 600 by 400. There we go. That's even better. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And it's going to think for a second for me. And there we go. So now let's take a look and compare our two graphics. So now you can see the difference as far as, so now the cat graphic is a little bit more in line with the hummingbird graphic, because again, remember your hummingbird graphic was 640 by 438. And I'll go ahead and use my magnifier so we can take a closer look at 72 PPI. And now the cat graphic is 600 by 400. So now you're saying, fantastic, I'm ready to save my graphic. So I'm gonna do a file, an export, and I'll do quick export as PNG. Now here's where I make some changes regarding how I save graphics. One of the biggest mistakes that a designer can make as far as the web goes is not keeping that original graphic size. So normally what I'll do is maybe since, okay, so this is called European short hair. And what I'll do is I'll add the width value at the end here, just so that I know and I have a copy of it. So now what I can do is I could actually even go one step further since I know I'm going to be using this on in my website is I can navigate to my website here and I can just save the edited version in that folder. And let me zoom out. So I could close this out and I'll still have the original. I'd tell it I don't want to save. But now let's go ahead before we do that. Let's take a look at the Hummingbird graphic. Let's see what we can do as far as the image size on the Hummingbird graphic. So originally your Hummingbird graphic, you're looking at about 640 by 438. So what I'm going to do is try to do 1660 by 1136. Because what I'd like to show you is how that affects the graphic. And you can actually see here in the preview window at 100%, you can start to see that pixelation happening along the edge there. So let's take a look at this actually in Photoshop now that I've tried to increase the size of a smaller graphic. Unfortunately, at 100%, you can really start to see the loss of quality here. I mean, especially in the feathers there, that's kind of the roughest part. And even in the background where you see these blockiness of gradient, we often, I was taught, you know, this is what we call the jaggies is especially along the outline here of the hummingbird. What's happening there is Photoshop is doing its best to try to make a guesstimate of what colored pixels should actually go there. There were not enough pixels to work with with a smaller image. So if you're like, I'm going to enlarge the image, it might not come out looking as nicely. And there's only so much you can do with a graphic at that point. So that's why I very much emphasize to students and those that are new to web design, Yes, having that original graphic or even having the camera raw for a photograph is absolutely essential because it is easier to take away pixels than it is to go back and add them to a smaller graphic. So that's just giving you a little bit of overview of how you can go in and make edits using Adobe Photoshop if you choose. As you're going to see though, Dreamweaver, we can technically set the width and size regarding a graphic uh, directly inside a Dreamweaver, 
The biggest drawback to this, however, is we're not really changing the file size. We are just changing the file display. So if you have a very large JPEG that is you know, a very large file size, it's still that same file size that's being downloaded to display. However, you're changing the overall display of it and making it smaller. But we'll get into that in one of our next videos here when we start adding the images to our websites. But I hope this clarifies as far as gearing up and getting ready for using images on the web. You want to start out with the highest resolution possible and then we pull back to place on the web versus having something that is already pre-sized and realizing that we actually need it to be a higher resolution.